Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world after having fixed up the bad toaster into the good waffle iron, or the good potato masher, I think is what we settled on. We being me and one person in Discord. And we are back in the house now, and I had been thinking, because I came up here to sleep, and I realized that we are not quite done with this room here, the details here, because there were sort of two things that I thought of, one after that episode where we detailed this whole room, and one during it. Now, the one after is that I wanted to put a little oven in here so that we could actually have a place to cook, because right now we only have a place to bake bread and pies. We don't have a fire pit. I was thinking we could put a stove under here with a little grate on it and then we could build a fire in there and be able to use that and it would also act as if it were or we could pretend that it was a two chamber baking oven instead of the single chamber that we have now much more advanced design and then for these tools I think I noted way back when we made them that they kind of are the exact same color as the granite rock, apparently. The bauxite rock behind them. <laughs> that must be a chiseled piece right there. And I wanted to remake them in tin bronze to make them just stand out a little bit. And so I think we're going to do that today. However, while we do have plenty of tin, we are pretty short on copper. This is the last of our copper because I turned all of it into tin bronze so that we could make all of our lanterns, and I have not gone out to get more copper. So... I think we're going to have to go and get some more. And while we do have some copper surface nodes here, I was thinking we could head back down underground to where there's actual, you know, real amounts of copper. We found some in episode 87 when we went on a bit of an exploration underground. And I was thinking we could head back there and grab the two nodes or two deposits worth of copper from the tunnel that goes down right about there, I think. It's sort of beyond the hill. And, yeah. So, let's get to probably the first part of the chisel work today. Do we have any... Hmm... Do we have any slate? Yes, we do. Let's grab some slate. Let's grab some... Ooh, let's do granite. Yeah, I think granite's a pretty safe bet. We will need one piece of grass from somewhere. And we already have the logs up there. So let's get this chisel work started. Wait a second. Didn't we just make a hand wedge in the last episode? Let's go get that. Was it the wedge or the planer? Eh, we'll take both. Let's see, I do think it may have been the planer. Yes, okay, let's just... We'll do a bit of that. And yeah, perfect. That's amazing. I love that so much.
There we go. We have a little stove with a grate on it and a little latch and some hinges. So now we can go ahead and we'll take our grass and tuck you in there. And we can even build a fire. There we go. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And makes it believable that we might bake up here with the fire going down here. Okay, now for these guys, we should probably go and check the weather. It is calm, okay. We should probably go and we're going to rejigger our inventory for a bit of an underground exploration. Although it is in areas that we've been before, so we kind of know what to expect. And that means steel armor. I would take this, but honestly, while this is definitely faster, the steel armor is kind of just... I don't care, you know, things hit me and I don't care when they hit me because they just don't do damage. So I'm going to go ahead and get my inventory ready and I'll meet all of you when we are about to head underground. Alright, rise and shine everyone. We are just about ready to go out, but before we do that, we have an announcement to make. Thanks to a very generous donor, I have an extra Vintage Story game key that I've been requested by the owner of the game key if I could do a bit of a giveaway on the channel. So, we're going to do that. The game key was donated by Farkoth. Who is Farkoth, you might ask? Well, Farkoth is the developer of a very cool mod called Ceramos. Now, we don't have it on the Vintage Story guide world, but it is a very beautiful decorative mod that allows you to make ceramic tiles and to glaze them with different patterns and colors. It is very neat. You can check it out by going to the Vintage Story mod database and looking up Ceramos. Now, for this giveaway, if you are interested in being eligible for the prize, then all you have to do is leave a comment that includes the hashtag Ceramos on screen now. Any comment without the hashtag or any comment in Discord of the hashtag will not be eligible. Only comments on YouTube will get you the chance to win. I will draw the name randomly in the next episode, and then the winner will be announced, and I'll send them the game key. The deadline to enter the giveaway is February 26, 2023. So, once this video goes live, you'll have about one week to enter. So, thank you very much to Farkoth for donating the game key. It was a very generous gesture, and I think this will be a fun little way to find that game key at home. Okay, let's get on our way underground. So in order to find these copper deposits, I did actually go back and I watched episode 87 again, and that is how I sussed out about where we need to go down. It should be, yeah, right about here. Let's dig down here and see what happens. This might hurt. Just hope it doesn't. Ah, we've got something. We've got something here. I think. Alright, there we go. So we'll put one torch here. I do think we have to break through. We've got here. No? Maybe we have to go up here? Well, that's weird. Okay. I'm going to go and do some research real quick and see if I can figure out... Oh, never mind. There it is. Haha! <laughs> Whoopsie. Oh, oh, oops. Double oops. Maybe I'll come fill these in later, I think. Let's just drop you... Somewhere you won't get wet. So, I guess here. Alright, what have we got here? We have a big old shield in our way. Ah, okay, so we do have a ladder down. Let's go ahead and get a second ladder down. You know, we probably should have brought along our other ladders, but you know what? We're just going to burn through some of these, and I might maybe run up and make a second set just to have some more with us. You'll see. Okay. 
we are here and so are our friends. Let's go ahead and we're going to put our armor on and start whacking these guys. That's right, five smacks. Get these guys off our tail. And maybe we will just head on over here if we can. Bye. Okay, now I think... I think we need to go up this direction. I bet that dozens of bells have sprung up in our absence. Okay, I'm pretty sure our first one should be like right up here. I think. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Must be on the area below then. What's it over this way? Oh, here it is, right here. So what we're going to do here, to avoid any annoyances, is we're just going to set up a bit of a perimeter with these fences. And that way, these guys can complain all they want, but they can't do a darn thing about us. And we'll just break back through when we go to leave. Now, this presents a somewhat larger problem, but you know what? Just go ahead and we will wall it off about here, I think. As well as down here in the water. Just like that. And now I can finally get rid of these acacia fences for good. Alright, well, I'm going to get pickaxing, and I will see you all on the other side. Oh, this is poor. This is a different one. Wasn't the other one rich? Well, I guess that's just too bad. We'll have to uh, take it from here. I will see all of you on the other side of this deposit. Alright, everyone, we have... Cleared out this kind of small deposit. We got uh, a little over a stack, but honestly, it's not a whole lot of copper. I'm kind of thinking we do want to see if we can find that other. No, get. Go in the hole. We do want to see if we can get that other deposit to help shore up maybe some future lanterns or something else, really. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to try to find that. Now, I kind of have a recollection that that copper deposit was in andesite. So, we need to go deeper, because the andesite is down from here. And I think the best way to do that is to probably bust our way through here, and we'll just head down from where the ladder comes down, because I know there's andesite down there, and I think... I think it was kind of near here. I'm just not entirely positive. Let's see, do we have enough light to fight? Yeah, we do. Why not? All right, boys. You all want a tango? We can tango. We'll take some of this back just in case we need it. If you're staying gone, I'm okay with that. Let's go ahead. We're going to head down there. I think it might be where we end up with, like, nightmare guys spawning, which I'm not super jazzed about. But, uh, you know what? I'll take what I can get. Maybe you can see it from here. Oh, hey, look, there it is. <laughs> okay. Well, that was quick. All right, so we need to get down there. I think our... Ugh. This is kind of a bad route down, just because it's so populated around here. Let's go ahead and we'll drop some torches just to keep the guys from spawning up here on our heads. And I wonder if we can get... Oh, stop it. I wonder if we can get down there... There's a guy waiting for us over there. And like block off some of the area here before anything else happens. Let's let's give it a whirl. I don't know. We need to come out here. We're gonna just plant some torches, drop some light, keep things from spawning. Oh hi guy. Yeah, get out of here. Of 
We're just gonna take like 10 hits to kill this guy. Ooh, wow. Get lost. Chuck some torches down here just to keep them from... Uh oh. We're gonna do this. Yep. Bye, guys. Alright, so that's that. Heart pounding action, heart pounding fence drop in action. Alright, you are gone. Then we have a few more fences to place. Yeah, how do you like them apples, huh? Oh, no, you can't reach me. Oh, what a shame. Are there any holes for them to come up from or drop down from? Mm, they could get from up there, but that's that's fine. Let's go ahead and we're going to grab this stuff. And hopefully, we'll get more and better. Well, this is rich, so yeah. Let's go ahead and get working. Boy, am I clenched like crazy right now. Yep, I have steel armor, but with all these guys groaning, I don't know, just that sound just hits something primal, you know? That sort of primal heartstring makes you really just not really feel safe sleeping at night. It spawned in a really terrible location and shape, I think. Boy, they're mad about something. All right, well, I'm going to clean this out, and then we will get going. Somehow. Okay, everyone, we have cleared out that deposit. And we only got 42 rich copper, although that is still more copper overall than we got from the other one. Technically speaking, hey, rusty gear and some junk. And you know what? I think I'm going to probably... We're safe enough here. I'm going to go ahead and put my backpack down and toss some of this stuff in it. And while we're here, we'll get another meal staged. And get that going. Back on our backs. Pick you up. Pick you up. Okay, well, that is about it for here. But when I was down here, I don't know if you can see it on YouTube, but it looks like there is a path that goes up there that I'm not sure that we explored. I know we've been down that way, but I don't remember going up, and I checked the video well, when I was watching it. I was noticed that we didn't actually go that way, I don't think. Or if we did, I was very disoriented the whole time. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just sort of burrow our way around there and see if we can get over there without having to go down there. All the 10,000 Nightmare Drifters. And they can't get here, can they? No, good. Aha! We've made it. Okay, let's chuck you down. Ooh. Nightmares galore. Now, Nightmares... They have a limited number of spawns, so if we can knock a couple out, then we can probably consider the area relatively safe, at least for a little while. Come here, buddy. Let's go. Let's tango. Come on. Let's go. Okay, there's two right there, so if we can knock them both out, we can consider this place relatively safe. One hour later. Alright, we're going to hope that's all of them. This is getting kind of old. Yeah, get out of here. Ah, okay. What have we got here? Let's just... You know what? We can... I was going to say we can fence this off, but you know what? We're just going to... Okay, you know what? We'll fence you off. Why not? We have the chance to. Bye. Yeah, I don't think we've been this way before, so let's go on up. 
Okay, that was short. What is... Oh! Oh, yeah! Oh, thank you, Farkoth, for <laughs> giving us this. Oh, man. Okay. Neat. That was super close, and we missed it. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. You get lost. Wow. Holy cow. All right. Well, I know we're doing the rest of the day today. Do you? Aside from cleaning up this mess, let's go ahead and step on it and mark it. And look how stable it still is here. All right. So I guess... Is there anywhere else to go here? Because we've already been down. And down there. I know we, we came up from down there once, too. So I don't see anywhere else to go yet. All right. Well, remember I said, these things are freaking everywhere when you look for them. We have... And we have one close to us. Okay, it's not too bad. I mean, this is close, but still a bit of a hike to get there. So, yeah. All right. I'm going to get to work and clean this thing up, and then we'll dig to the surface, and it looks like we're pretty close to the beach here. So maybe we could do something cool with this. I don't know. We're sort of in a little hill. Maybe we can make, like, a staircase that comes out somewhere. But yeah. Of course, we also have our tin bronze to handle, so let's get this cleaned up and then we'll head home. Ooh. And uh, we have just the one. Okay. Well, I will see all of you on the other side of cleaning up this translocator, and then we will get going back to the surface and back to our tin bronze, and then maybe we'll come back and see if we can give this a repair and see where it goes. Okay, everyone. The room has been mostly cleaned. We do have a sunny village residence archive here, and some rye seeds and quartz chunks. I'm not super jazzed about, but let's go ahead and start digging out of here now. I usually like to come down in like a back corner. But we'll just go out in this corner, I think, for now. And really, really hope there aren't any drifters above us. Not that we can do anything about it if there are. But I do also hope we have enough ladders to get out. Now, being that we are kind of in the mountain, well, we're just kind of at the beach there. Let's just hope for the best, I think. Okay, well, I'm out of ladders. So, I do faintly hear some water that's are pretty close. Let's just dig a staircase the rest of the way up, I think. Hey, hey! We made it. Oh, wow. Okay, that's cool. That's really cool. Oh, we can do something with this. Oh, we have to do something with this. Maybe a second little cabana? Right here at the water's edge? Ooh, or we could do maybe a boat storage. Like a canoe shack. I wonder if we can put these rowboats on anything but water, because if we can, we could put them up on racks. Oh, I'm inspired now. I think we need to go and we'll make our tin bronze tools, and then I think we're going to change gears. I had a couple other small details in mind, but you know what? This is cooler. This is way cooler. That can wait, and we're going to come and work on this for the rest of the episode. Oh, we can even turn it... Oh... What if we use this overhang to make a little, like, a canoe cave or something? I don't know. We'll have to see. I kind of think I want something airy, so maybe we'll just take... I don't want to take that tree out. We'll take out this pumpkin field, take out the blue clay, and then put, like, a second little cabana over here with, like, a staircase that leads down to this. Enough of that shink, shink, shink. I think we have a plan. Before we start that plan, though, we're going to come out here with a couple of lanterns and put one about here at the entrance. We'll put one out here part way down, and then one down here, like there. Grab some of these, I guess. Why not? Get rid of you, then. 
And that way, when we come back down to check this out, we don't end up getting ambushed by a Nightmare Drifter hanging out in our new Translocator. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put these things away. Looks like our stones are full, so uh, off you go. But I am going to... Oh, that is so annoying. Oh well. But I'm going to see where we put our blue gears at. Plants, uh, ceramics. Nope. Oh. Oh. Okay. So, uh, I guess that's not happening today. I thought I had more. I could have sworn I had, like, a couple more somewhere. Because I only got... I got one from a drifter in our pit. But I thought I had... Maybe that's it. I don't know. I didn't check out here yet. Let's see. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Uh, did I leave it outside here? Nope. Okay, well, I guess we're going to have to wait until either the next temporal storm, or we could go down and try to fight some more Nightmare Drifters, but that sounds distinctly unappetizing to me. Look, I've told you, I'm a weenie. Get over it. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put this stuff away. And then I will meet all of you when we are getting ready to do our final bit of smelting for the day. It should also be the start of the smelting for the day, but never mind that. And I'll see all of you in a few minutes. Okay, here we are. We got our hammer. We have our crucible. Let's hammer out some of this stuff. And we're just going to probably turn as much of this into tin bronze as we can might actually be a lot less than we're expecting. So we can do about that. Okay, yeah. We'll have some copper left over and we'll have some more Cassiterite. It does not take much tin to make tin bronze. So let's go ahead and get that done. And you know what? While we are waiting for this to finish heating up, Someone, and I don't recall whom, so I apologize, someone pointed out correctly that I kind of goofed on these symbols when I had this in mind for air, and then kind of remembered halfway through it was supposed to be water. I forgot to fix the rest of it. So, what I'm going to do here is we are going to spin this one right side up. go. This also needs a line through it. So we're going to do this. So air is pointed upward with a line through it. Earth is downward with a line. Fire is upward, no line. And water is down, no line. go like that has been fixed I hope yeah that's right that's perfect I would never make a mistake like that again right right all right back to waiting stand out a lot more against that orange wall, don't they? Now, I'm not sure what to do with these copper ones, but I'm sure we can find a place for them. Maybe in the kitchen downstairs. Not a bad idea. There we go. Not too shabby. Alright. Next, let's think about what to do for the shack slash boathouse slash whatever it is we're going to do down on the beach for getting down to our new translocator. Let's go ahead and get this started. I think we're going to make a second little beachside cabana, but 
this will be a little boathouse for the one boat we have because I realized these take three resin to make and I have two resin, so it will be a boathouse for the single boat. Not boat's house, just boathouse. But let's go ahead and we need to clear out some of this area. And I don't think we're going to have this path come straight up here into the boathouse. I think what we'll do instead is we will have the boathouse be maybe right here across from the little cabana and I'll flatten some of this land out a little bit and then we will just sort of reroute this to come over and then up where we want it to. So to do that we're going to also take out this guy and we're going to take out this little fence here because it will be just getting in the way. So as far as the boathouse is concerned, I think... Do I need... Okay, I can hold it one hand. This is still so ridiculous. I love it. But this is pretty hefty. Let's put it between two blocks. You can't put it between blocks, but you are basically two blocks wide. So we want to make, like, a decently wide boathouse so we could have, like, one on either side of us, maybe even, like, on some shelves. So, yeah... I don't think I want this to run back into there. So we are definitely going to put this up here. <laughs> That's where it's going. So yeah, let's just have this kind of come off of, say, yeah, here. Hmm. Let's go one more. There we go. And we will drop down some of these in its place. Yeah, I think that should be fine. How long are you again? You are... One, two, three, four-ish long. Tell you what, can we do this instead? You know what? It's tight. It's going to be a bit tight, but I think we can do it. Yeah, I think we can do this just fine. It'll be... a challenge. But we're up for that. So the first thing I brought with me is I brought some ebony wood fences and with these we are going to come in here and let's see your three wide that should be good enough one, two three one two three and one there I think we're going to also just dig these away like this and I might replace this with a single kapok log just to make it look like it's sort of growing from the ground there and these will be our main supports. And we're just going to go back. One, two, three, four, five. That's, that's tight. It's real tight. And we're going to take you out. Just so we don't have you connecting to our build. There we go. And then, if you've been watching the other series, the Rusty Gear series, you'll know that I've been keen on doing some more sort of mixing and matching of colors in builds and also textures but in this case I think colors are sort of the biggest factor here I was thinking we want kind of like a ramshackle little thing here so I was thinking we could do the rough hewn fences as kind of walls just like over here but what I was thinking of is that we we'll use these bottom ones for like bleached like sun bleached planks and stuff. And then on the top, kind of as we go up, we'll kind of use some of these. And it won't be perfect, so we might have like one there and like that. Then we'll have like this. And maybe on this side we'll only do these guys sort of on the edges because the sun doesn't reach back here as much. So we'll just do a bit of that. Let's see, that's south, though. South gets more sun, so we're going to do some of this. And a bit of that. Just like that. Get you going across the top here. And then I'm thinking we might want to knock some of these out, just for, like, something interesting. So let's do... Let's, like, knock you out. And maybe you. Oh, you're gone. And maybe we'll take out you. 
Maybe this isn't as well kept as the other buildings. And then we'll just do some of these. To your north, we also have sun that rises kind of... Mm, maybe I'll do one right there. That'll be the only cypress on that level. Yeah, I think I like that. That's kind of cute. So then, what we can do is we're going to take out the floor here and replace it with something a bit different. Now, for the floor, I was thinking along the edges, we could use some regular old granite cobblestone, and that would be so that, like, when the rain drips off the roof, it sort of has something to splash onto without splashing dirt up on our little build here and getting things dirty. And then on the inside, I was thinking we would have some ebony slabs on the floor to give it a nice grounded look. We're gonna have some dark floors with some brighter walls and other contents. Now for the roof. The roof is gonna be something different, something we actually haven't done before because I don't, I don't often like them, partly because of the work involved and partly because I just don't like the texture. But I was thinking that for this particular roof, a thatched roofing would be perfect. It is kind of, you know, festive in a tropical way. And it's got a bit of a texture to it that I don't normally enjoy, but for building like a boathouse on the beach in the tropics, I think it's perfect. And I think it'll sort of complement this roof here. Like this is a very clean roof. Sure, the place is a bit run down, but it's brightly colored and we really care for it. Here, we're just keeping extra water off of our boats. So this roof may have once been this nice bamboo, but now it's kind of, you know, worn and ragged and some of the bamboo's splitting. Or maybe we just harvested some banana leaf fronds or something and turned it into thatch. I think I want to do maybe more of a barn style roof. So it'd be like a peak that goes like this. So let's get that going on. I think we're going to do that by adding a little bit more height to our fences here and putting our roof on it like that. All right, and as we have a bit of a snack, I think we can, yeah, we can work with this roof. We can definitely work with this kind of roof. I do wish these would connect here, but you know what? This does hold that up, so I'm not too disappointed. What I think we'll do is we'll just run these ebony fences kind of along the top here, just to give it a bit of a border. And we'll also get rid of the dirt that we don't need here anymore. Does this look okay? Yeah, I think I can work with that. That kind of helps bring some of this color in the floor up to here. And then in the sort of barn areas, we can just do more of these right here. And there we go. And one of the advantages of working with the sort of fence style builds is that we get this automatic overhang here. So we don't have to worry about building out an extra block. And in fact, if we do, it might look a little funny as if we're kind of adding extra, extra overhang, which might be handy in some climates, but probably not this one. All right, now before we get caught up in the decoration aspect of this, I think we should tend to the practical one, one of which is lighting. So let's get some light probably right there. And then I think, I think we can maybe repurpose this stuff that we had ripped out before. Maybe just put some fences like here and drop this light there. Next, I brought along some trap doors. We only need the one though. And we need to get underground. And we're gonna do that right here. We will replace these with full-size blocks. Like that, and that, and that. And there we go. Then we're going to go ahead and we will drop, let's see, I think we'll drop you in there and we'll have the ladder on this side so we can just sort of pop out and then be able to climb up because in the base game, you can't just climb on the trap doors. I know some mods added in, but those can be frustrating in my experience. 
Now, we need to get down to Y97, and then we need to come back all the way to 10243. So let's get to the Y97 first. I don't think we want to do a staircase. I'm just going to do like a little right turn. We'll go down, out, and then right turn and get down there. And here we are. Now, what I think I might do, just sort of for decoration and for safety's sake, is we're going to put a lantern in the wall here at a bit of an angle. And then we'll put one down here as well. Maybe right here. And that way, while it's not perfectly lit, it's pretty good. And then I'm going to come back here probably after the episode and I will sort of fill this back in, take out those. But I think what else I want to do is I want to put down some path blocks here. One, to make it a little faster to walk, and then two, just to help prevent drifter spawns even more. Okay, so now for the final bits of detail I wanted to add in here, I want to add some boat racks, and I think we're going to do that probably... You know what, not... Ooh, those will connect. I don't like that too much. Hmm. If I do vertical planks, do you connect? You do. Ugh. No, thank you. Okay. We're going to change this up a little bit. Let's do vertical planks here, like so, and then maybe we can just do some horizontal planks on top, like so. Mm, no, better yet. Let's do them more like this. So, boat rack one, or boat table, I guess. There we go. And let's go ahead and we'll put our boat down. Let's see if we can sort of center it nicely. No, we cannot. Okay. Let's try that again. Let's put you... Uh, there. Not quite. Can we put you more like there? Uh, that's... That's decent. That's decent. It is the same color as our boat rack, though, so maybe we should get... Well, actually, I'd like to get more kinds of boats, but that means more resin. I don't have resin just now. So, I think for now, we will leave that. And we'll just assume that, you know, we use the same wood for boats as we do for our tables to hold boats. And that is the story, apparently, of how a quest to find some copper for some cutlery turned into a whole thing about finding a translocator and building a little beachside boathouse to access it. But that is about all the time we have for this episode of the Vintage Story Guide. I hope you enjoyed our adventures in trying to fix our kitchen up and the sort of unplanned adventure that it turned into. Whenever we get some more temporal gears, we will be sure to activate that translocator and check out what's on the other side. And maybe we'll go caving around here some more in some other caves and see if we can find more translocators. In the next episode, get ready for Something that a lot of you have actually been bugging me about, and I am excited to get to work on a bit of a new project that you might not see coming. And as a final reminder, if you want to enter the giveaway for the Vintage Story Game Key, be sure to add a comment, any comment, with the hashtag SRAMOS by February 26, 2023. And once again, thanks to Farkoth for donating the extra game key. As always, my name is Hasman Kurazar. Thank y'all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.